Jonathan asks, what are your thoughts on the fact that only 15 million Bitcoin addresses hold more than one dollar, and less than five million hold more than one hundred dollars worth? Um, I've seen these statistics a lot, and part of the implication here is that this shows that wealth is very unequally distributed within Bitcoin. Five addresses alone hold billions of dollars. Um, and most addresses have very small amounts. Well, here's the thing. Addresses are not people. And despite the fact that that is obviously true if you've done any of the research in this space, people seem to try to shoehorn these kinds of statistics to demonstrate some kind of fact by going from the number of addresses and the amounts that are in them and drawing conclusions or simply since it would be wrong to draw conclusions, simply implying things in a very weaselly way, implying that this means that wealth is concentrated, or they can draw any conclusions about the number of people who do X or do Y. Here's why it's wrong. Um, if you look at an organization like Coinbase, one of the very large exchanges, but this applies to all of the exchanges that use custodial accounts. They have uh, what, 12, 14 million customers at the moment. Uh, do you think they have 14 million Bitcoin addresses? They do not. The vast majority of the funds is kept in a handful of addresses in cold storage. So a company with 15 million users may only have 150 Bitcoin addresses that hold the wealth of 15 million users. Now that looks like an enormous concentration of wealth, but it doesn't belong to 150 users. It belongs to 15 million users, even though it's concentrated in the 150 um, addresses. But that's not the only thing. Meanwhile, on the exact opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, you know, how many addresses does a power user who uses Bitcoin on a daily basis uh, with a hardware wallet that doesn't reuse addresses, that use a different address per transaction, that generates change addresses, maybe um, that uses both SegWit and regular addresses, etc., etc., or multiple wallets, one on mobile, uh, say a warm wallet, which is for operational expenses, a hot wallet, which is on a smartphone for like penny cash, and some cold storage. How does that user look like on the blockchain? Well, I'm one of those users, and I can tell you over the past five years, I've probably used 20,000 Bitcoin addresses. Um, and at any point in time, my wallets may have 200, 300, 500 addresses with change um, and various small quantities, less than a dollar each or slightly higher than a dollar, maybe one to three dollars. And that activity looks like a whole bunch of people who have very little uh, uh, in terms of, of Bitcoin. I said 15 million Bitcoin addresses hold more than one dollar. Well, I can tell you I've got a whole bunch of Bitcoin addresses that hold less than a dollar. Um, so you cannot make these conclusions. Uh, it is impossible to draw conclusions from statistics that divide or cluster addresses and values. You will draw the wrong conclusions every time. All right, and Honey Podge, great name, points out the question, the one I just answered about addresses, wasn't really about concentration of wealth. It was about the most people don't own their coins. Isn't that very dangerous to the network if there was a hack? Yes. Okay, if that was the point of that question, and I'm sorry I misunderstood it, uh, because I have seen those kinds of statistics for weeks now being used to, to make some points about wealth distribution. Um, yeah, you can, you can, in fact, use that data to show that um, exchanges concentrate a lot of wealth in a few addresses and custodial accounts. And yes, that is dangerous. It is dangerous if there is a hack. Um, let me rephrase that. You said, isn't that very dangerous to the network if there was a hack? It's not an if, it's a when. Is it dangerous? 
it's not dangerous to the network, but a lot of people will lose money. I think Bitcoin has shown great resilience, even with big hacks. Um, and even if there is a hack, the money will get redistributed in the economy eventually. So the network doesn't suffer, although a lot of people will will lose money. Uh, it is very dangerous when there is a hack. It's not an if. <laughs>